All right, good evening, everybody. My name is Himanshu, and uh, I'm going to talk about trees today. So this talk is in a series of talks in which we've been discussing all the data structures and algorithm topics relevant from the point of view of uh, lead code or interview preparation. And uh, <clears throat> we finished dynamic programming, and uh, there is some part left in it. And today I'm starting trees. Now this topic session says it's session number two, but it's not, it's actually session number one. I had to cancel the previous one. So let's get started now. And if you have any question, you can ask it on the Discord or you can either ask on Discord or you can ask on the Zoom chat or you can just unmute yourself and uh, ask a question directly. If you ask it on this or through a chat, I, I will take time to respond because I, I, I'm not going to look at the chat actively while working on this session. All right. Trees. So <clears throat> while talking about this topic of trees, uh, there are two ways to approach this topic. Right? So there is a traditional way of teaching like a university type of course material where we talk about like how to write trees and all that and properly writing like tree classes with all the methods in it. Or, and then the second is the way in which it gets asked on lead code and in interview questions. So I'm going to be focusing on these, the latter one more, and I will make explicit the difference when it comes like what I'm doing. Okay. So trees, let's start. <clears throat> This topic is big. We have all kinds of trees and uh, I'm going to cover some special trees, which are most important. And uh, if you guys have any further, if you guys need any further discussion, then you can, we can talk. So uh, in order to understand trees, what trees are, let's, let's go one by one. Okay. What is an array? All right. So array is a contiguous block of memory, all right? So let's say if somebody creates an array of, let's say size 10, somebody does like new int 10, and that is essentially creates contiguous blocks of memory. These are together. Like each one can hold an integer and that's an array. <clears throat> to overcome certain limitation of array, we bring in linked lists, all right? So in linked lists, the data is stored sequentially, all right? But each unit consists of two parts. One is the data and the other part is a reference to the next data. Till we get to the last part where we don't have any reference. Right, so the first item is called, let's say head. And the last item is basically one which has the reference to none or null. Right, so the linked list is a linked structure in which data is arranged sequentially, right? There's a left to right order and each unit has a reference to the next one. If you go to, if, if we talk about any of the programming website or any problem, essentially what you will have is this. You will have some kind of, let's say class like node. Okay. I'm going to write some Python code, but don't worry you guys, this is, this essentially is a pseudo code. So as far as you're concerned, so let me actually use a different ID. So just give me a second, let, let this fire up. Let's get rid of this. All right, so th there is something called a class and something will be like called a node. And that node will have 
two member variables, right? So don't, if you're not from Python background, don't worry about this. I'm just writing some bogus syntax at the moment. And each thing will have a data type equals to something and a next, which is the next node, a reference to the next node. So that's a node of a linked list. Uh, we have some data and then we have a next item, which is actually referencing the next node in the list. If this item is null, then essentially you are at the end of the linked list. And to all of the functions that you write, all of the functions, right? Let's say some function is there. Essentially you pass a node in that function. And that function just takes that node, which is usually the head of the linked list, this head, and it iterates over this linked list performing some function. It may be deletion, addition, or doing some other work, searching, sorting, or something like that. <clears throat> now, let's take this further and let's come to trees. All right. So, here. Let's get rid of this and come back here. Tree is another type of linked structure. Okay. But there is no one sequence. There is no one linear sequence. I mean, so you have a node which has some value in it or some data in it. All right. Then it has reference to two or more than two nodes. Right. So there is another value and then maybe something else. And then like this guy may be referring to this as well. And this guy may be referring to something else like that. Just keep on building. So you get the idea. So it's almost like a linked list, but it's just, it's not linear. You can have more than two siblings, sorry, a children of a node. So that's essentially results in a tree. The only condition for, for a tree is that there is that this value here, this next here cannot go back here. If it go back, goes back, then it's a loop. Then it becomes a, uh, I mean, it becomes a loop. And then that data structure becomes something else when we'll talk about that as well. But essentially it's one way, but each node can have multiple children. So that's a tree. So let's consider a tree. Okay, suppose you have the node number one. It has some value. Let's say it has 10 value in it. Then it has, I'm talking about right now, a tree which has two children in it. So this another node it's referring to. You're gonna clarify the terminology really quick. Five and let's say this is six. And then this one points to two nodes as well. Suppose this is uh, whatever, 16. And then these two don't point to anything, right? They, they, are, they are basically none and none, essentially. Similarly, this guy, let's say 20 and nothing, none. And let's say this guy has a left, which is none, but a right, which is another node, which is let's say, and then these are basically none and none. <clears throat> so when a tree data structure, when you look from the top down, uh, ranges in a top down structure like this, it gives an idea that this is essentially the beginning of the tree, which is referred to as the root. And then the root leads to multiple children, right? So there, this children, for example, is called a left child. This will children will be called a right child of this tree of this root node. If we impose a condition that each node can only have two at max two children, then each two, then each node will essentially result in two branches. And that type of a tree is called a binary tree. 
the binary being two nodes coming out of one node. There can be n trees, right? There can be all sort of trees. n trees means up to n children can be present for each node. So this is called root node. This is the left child. This is the right child. And this, where the tree terminates, this position where the, the, uh, uh, where a node does not have a left child or a right child, this node is referred to as leaf node. So starting from root to leaf, leaf is the position where the tree ends. Now a tree can have multiple leaves. Right. So that's a basic anatomy of a binary tree. Okay, binary tree is the one that gets usually asked everywhere. And that's what I'm covering right now. Any questions so far? Okay, if not, then let me tell you how a binary tree will be represented. So in a usual situation, right? In a usual situation, Ideally, you will have a node class and it's a tree node. So we refer to it as tree node, which is a class, right? So there will be a tree node class. And in an ideal situation, like once again, in a university situation, you will have probably another class, which is let's say binary tree. So what's going to happen we, is binary tree. We can't see your screen. I, I don't know if I'm alone, but there's a problem. Are you guys able to see my screen? It's just half of it. Like just the editor, just. Yeah, it's half. just an editor with I'm writing text. Yeah, but it's not completely visible. It's not completely visible. Is it the size or? I can see it. I don't know what's the problem. I can see it. Yeah, I can see it. Okay, let me increase the size in case the size is a problem. Okay, let's do okay, that. Okay, that's better. All right, so tree node, right? So you have a tree node, <clears throat> which defines really the node structure. And the binary tree essentially takes that tree node and form creates a binary tree out of that whole uh, using that node class. Right, so that's the usual way of doing this. However, in a interview situation or in a lead code situation, if you go to lead code, for example, and you look at a, a, a tree problem or an interview problem, what they will give you for any one, any single problem is that you will have to write a function which will accept a tree node and it will do something for any tree beginning from that tree node. So if I go back to my class here, this is a node. This is a node, this is a node, node. All of these are node. In 99% of time, what you will have to, you will have to write some kind of a function. Let's say, let's call this function as, let's say, search. So this is a, some function, random function search. What this function will accept is a node, a tree node. Once past that node, you will have to find whether whatever something that is present or it's not or starting that that node something is present or not something like that so usually this root node gets passed into your functions and then you have to iterate over this tree to do something right these are different situations in different situations you may have to do different things for example a function may say that for, for example a function may accept let's say in this case, search tree node, and then let's say a key, right? So essentially what you will be passing is, for example, you may be when, while calling it, you may be saying, okay, pass root to it and search whether six is present. So your function here will get a tree node. Now it will examine the left and right, the node itself, the left and right child, and try to see if that key is present. If the key is present, then 
return true or false or whatever. But this is going to be the situation in all your problems. So the only class that you're really concerned with is the tree node class. And you are given a tree, uh, the root of the tree, and then you have to perform the operation on the rest of the tree by iterating through it. All right. So for any node, let's say this five, the tree beneath it is called subtree. For example, the subtree for five is this. That's the subtree. All right. So for any node given, you'll have to perform something on the subtree of that node. So <clears throat> let me create a very basic tree node class and then we'll build on top of it. So let's just call it, let's say tree node dot py. Now, ideally what I would want is what I was trying to do is I was trying to create some kind of a visual that will be able to render the tree in this way. So that it's more visit, so it's uh, visually more uh, understandable, but that I've not been able to do yet. So, but I mean, if you guys want, you can just get, when you solve lead code problems, it has a visualizer. Basically, you can see your tree in real 2D rather than just 1D. But here we'll come up with different ways to do that. Let's create a class called tree node. Once again, I'm writing Python. If you if you don't know Python, don't worry about it. And what will happen in all of these case, cases is that I'm just defining an initializer in Python right now and just calling, let's say it initializes called initializer is called with some value. The tree will have a value, a left, which points to the left child and a right, which points, which points to the right child of the tree. That's all. That's all your function will have to be concerned with. Okay. Somehow internally a tree would have been constructed and you are given the node and the node will have a value, a left and right. And the left. And right should be none. What is that? Is there a question? The value shouldn't be none. You have a mistake on why number six. Which is, yeah, I, I mean, you're talking uh, about self this is not initialized. Well, equal well. This is what you're saying. Don't worry about it. I, I'm going to come to it in, in a second. Oh, sorry. Right. So you will be just given this much. And uh, basically, what you have to write, let's say you will have to write some kind of function. Okay. You will, let's say, it's like search. And your function essentially will get a node, which is a tree node and let's say some key, which you have to search. And then basically do something to find the key. That's what you will have to do. So how are these operations performed? We will look, so we'll begin from this perspective. All right. And then we're going to uh, write some functions to solve some problems. All right. So first thing is let's get rid of this guy. Let's just construct a tree. Okay. So forget about all this. I'm going, I'm going to write some very basic Python type code. Okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'm just going to create a tree. So first let's say I'm going to create a root node, which is a tree node with some value. Let's say this value is five. And once you put that value, it gets assigned to the, that value of that particular node. So you can create any node that you want, right? You can create this and then you can just write root dot left equals to another tree node with some value, let's say 10. And then similarly, you can say root dot right is something, let's say t dot whatever 11. Let's just do that. 
So just by writing this much, what you have done is this. Now this is the manual way of creating tree. I'm not, I'm, I mean, you don't have to worry about it, but for the problems, I'm going to create the tree this way quickly. And then we will write function to explore these trees. So currently I have a function. I created a node with value five and I'm calling this root node. Right. So this root is a tree node with value five. Then I said left of that root, this is going to be another tree node containing value 10. So this value is 10 and that is the left node. And the right node is another value, another tree node with value 11. And these one, the, their left and right are none by default. So essentially those are the leaves at the moment. Let's add three more nodes to this. Okay. So what I'm going to do is now I want to add, let's say the node to 10 right now. Okay. So what I'm just going to do, I'm just going to create some kind of a temp. Let's say, I'm just going to say current equals to root dot left. So now current is pointing to this root dot left. Now notice one fact, this is what I said. This is not the university university style or the ideal style of doing things. Look, I am changing the attributes of an object or I'm getting the attributes of an object without invo invoking a setter or a getter. I am just directly changing the object in that value so object by in, in the value by directly assigning it. Right. So I'm changing the attributes of an object by directly assigning values to the, those attributes. That's not the object oriented style. Either you should have the getter or setter and the method should be protected. But so this is where I call, uh, we are not following the university lines of doing things, but this is how you will be doing problems uh, in interviews. And once again, on lead code. And so I want you to be familiar with this kind of format. So root dot left. Now current is pointing to this 10 node and we can just once again, say the same thing uh, to this point here. Make this current and let's say this guy is current and put some values here. Let's say 21, 32. And once again, let's, so now with this operation, what I've done is I've created two more nodes. Let's say this is 21 and this is 32. I'm pointing like this and pointing like this. Now these are our new leaf nodes. Now I'm going to bring the current here and add one node to here as well. So I'm going to keep this as nothing and I'm going to add a node here. Uh, let's say the value is whatever 101. Okay. And this is also a leaf node. So let's just do that again. Current dot right and left don't do anything for the right. I'm just going to add one one. So I've manually by typing, I've created a tree of five nodes, six nodes, and that's the structure. Now let's now given this tree, you can see that there's a root and the root has a linked structure all the way to the down to the bottom, right? Somewhere in those problems, this is or this was this will already be there in background. So now when you do something like right, like let's define some function. You will accept a node. And then you will do something. This node will be most likely be a root, you'll be passed a root, and then you'll have to perform the operation on the entire tree. Now, how will you perform the operation on the entire tree. So let's, before I get into that, any question right now. Okay. So now comes the interesting part. So we have dealt with the rudimentary stuff. Now, once you have this, give me a second. Yeah. Once you are past the root, all right, the first thing 
to do anything. Let's suppose that you want to search, you want to search whether 32 is there or not, right? You need to find a way to systematically traverse through this tree. Okay. So there are many, many ways in which you can traverse through a tree. You can come up with your own strategy, right? You may say, what I will do is I will check the node. Then I may check the, it's, it's neighbor, it's children. Then I may check the children of their children one by one. That may be one strategy. Or you may say, I will go depth all the way here. If I don't find it, then I will go to the first branch and then search here. So I may go something like this here. If I don't find it, then I'm going to return, go here. If I don't find, then I'm going to go here. If I don't find, then I'm going to come back and go here. So complete depth, depth style of searching. The first one was something like you can go here, then you can search these, then you can search these. So that is another style of looking at it. All of these have a name. These are very standard way of traversals and all of these have a name, have names. And then we're going to explore some of these and solve. I'm going to give you some more assignments so you can solve those as well. So you must, you may have heard of these names, the traversals within a tree. Okay. So for example, this one, the one that we, this, this, did. this essentially is a BFS, a breadth first search type of graph algorithm where you explore a node, then all its neighbors, then all the neighbors of the neighbors. But in, in the language of tree, if you look, we explore one level at a time. So this is called a level order traversal. That's the name. Actually, let me get rid of this. So that's the level order traversal. There are different ways. So there is something called a pre order traversal. There is something called in order traversal and post order traversal. But once you go more esoteric, there's something called column order traversal or vertical order traversal. Let's look at all of these one by one. Okay. In order to do any operation on the trees, you will need to traverse through the tree. So the traversal, the traversing the tree should be clear. Like that should not be a problem for you. All right. So a, a pre-order traversal, what it does is, for example, it tells you whenever you are on a node, you check that node, then you check the left subtree and then the right subtree. So you get the value of the current node, then recursively repeat on the left node and right node. And we're going to a tree, all of the tree traversals most likely will use a lot of recursion. And if they don't use recursion, then we'll have to do inbuilt. You will have to explicitly do recursion by incorporating stacks. Let's look at a pre-order traversal results. If I do a pre-order on this tree, okay, then the results will be, I will first explore five. Then I will go to the left subtree and the left subtree, the first node is 10. So I will uh, do pre-order around 10 and say 10 is the next answer. Then I will go to the left subtree. So before I go to any of these right nodes, this one or this one, I will first, I'm going to explore the whole left subtree in that way. Then I reach 21. Once I reach 21, I'm going to note down 21. Then I'm going to say left is none. There's, this is not, there's no left child. There's no right child. This is a leaf node. Okay. Then I'm done. Then explore the right tree here. So the next answer will be 32. Then once this whole thing is explored, we go back to five and they say, okay, the left is completely exposed, this exposed, uh, sorry, explored. Let's go to the right part. And where we go to 11, then we're going to explore the left subtree of 11, which is none. Then we go to right subtree and that's 101. 
So that's one way of exploring a tree. That is you explore the current node, then explore the left subtree then explore the right subtree. It's called the pre-order traversals. Historically, these three are the traversals that are taught everywhere. Pre-order, in-order and post-order. Right? Each of them have spe special meaning as well, but uh, we'll, we'll come to that in a bit. So suppose that you had to write a function called pre-order traversal. Okay. Now I'm going to write that function in the same place here. Okay. Suppose there's a function called def pre-order traversal and it takes a node in it. Now, once again, in order to solve tree problems, you will need the help of recursion a lot. Okay. So if you don't, if you're not very familiar with recursion, then it would be ideal to brush up the skills on recursion. And if you need my videos, you can basically message me. I will get you the link of my YouTube page. So this is how you will be asked question and the, let's just put something and the, and the caller would call your code, your function by passing the root. So now given the root of this tree, the one that we have just created, do a pre-order traversal of the whole tree, right? So that is the question. When we write recursion, let's write this code. Let's write this pre-order routine. And then I will explain some more details behind it. So how are we going to write this pre-order routine? Okay. So if, if this route is given to us, let's say our only job is to print. So I'm, I can print this five and then I can recursively call my same function on the left subtree and the right subtree and let recursion carry, rec let recursion worry about the rest of the details here. Right. How? Let's see. If this was one node, okay, just one node. If this was one node, we could have said print node, print node dot left and print node dot right. But in the most basic situation, if this tree, one second, if the tree was just this much, then the pre-order traversal would have been node, node left and node right. So that would have been the answer, right? So if I run this code now, you will notice that, okay, my mistake, just give me a second. I'm printing the object rather than the value of the object. So let me just say node dot well node dot left well and node dot right dot well. Right. Let's run this. And then you get the answer as five, 10, 11. Right. So five first, 10 first and 11 first, but this tree is not just three nodes, right? It has more nodes in it. So we need to call here, print this node and then recursively go to the left subtree. All right. Now, once we call 10, then 10 will be printed. Then we recursively call the left subtree again. We go to 21, 21 will be printed, but then we will be recursively calling again, the same routine, the pre-order routine, let's say called PO pre-order on this, which is none, right? So once we reach that situation, if we notice that the, that the node is none, then we don't need to do anything. That is, we just return in that case. We don't need to do anything. We just come back. So in order to incorporate that, what I'm going to do is I am get rid of this. I'm just going to write a base condition that is if node. So this condition means if the node is not none, that is if the node is not none, then you print node dot well 
that if a particular node is not none, then print node dot well, then recursively call pre order on node dot left, and then pre order node dot right. And if the node is none, which I am not explaining here, then the function will just return, right? The function will just come on the first line. Oh, the node is none. That's it. Return. There is nothing else to do. Here, let me add a little bit of Python syntax to remove the new line while printing. So let's run this code now. We run this code and notice the output. So 5, 10, 21, 32, 11, 101. Right? So this is 5, 10, 21, 32. I deleted the output earlier. So 5, 10, 21, 32, and then 11 here. And then 101. Right, so that's the pre-order routine. Notice how neat, how neat this routine is. So pre-order means process the current node, then call the function recursively, then recurse on the node, the left subtree. Once that is done, then recurse the right subtree. That's it. That's the pre-order traversal. Now, pre-order traversal can be asked in a different flavor. Also, it can be asked, but why is it important? It's important because in order to solve any problem, you need to recurse the tree. You need to, sorry, traverse the tree. So that's one way of traversing. Any questions before we move forward? Okay. So that's the pre-order traversal. Let's go to the second traversal, which actually is very important one as well. And what we do is let me get rid of this by rubbing here. Just give me a second. Let me clear out. So let me get rid of this, 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 this. Okay. The next the next one is called the in order traversal. What in order traversal does? Whenever you call an in order on a node, okay, first the node, first the left subtree will be evaluated then node itself will be evaluated and then right subtree will be evaluated. So if this was the tree and we called the, and we were supposed printing the value of each traversal. All right. And we call the in order on this five, then essentially first we will print the left child, which is the 10. Then the node itself, five, is the left node itself, and then the right, which is the 11. <coughs> Excuse me, give me a second. Yeah. And if the tree is bigger than that, then essentially we will be, in this case, for example, then we will say recursively call in order on here, then print, then recursively call in order on here. Once we call in order on this 10, so let's just run through the function calls. Okay. Let's say first I'm going to write in order as IO. Okay. Let's just say IO in order. When I call in order of five, it will call in order of 10 and 11. But this 11 will not be processed yet, right? So first left subtree has to be processed. The in order of 10 will then call in order of 21. In order of 21 will call the in order of none. Clearly this is none. We don't need to do anything. So we will process the 21 node. Then we will come the in order of none again, because that's the right child. So left child node, right child, right? So we will print 21 first. 
this is none. We don't need to do anything. So we come back here and then we tell 10 that the left subtree has been completely processed. So let's go right of 10. What is the right of 10 is in order of 32 now. So 32, we will explore the left, which is none, right, left, which is none, then 32 itself, and then right, which is none. So nothing. We go back, we go to back five, and then we call this in order on 11. Right. Once we call on 11, we explain, we explore the left node, left subtree first, which is none. So nothing. Just one small thing. So yeah, nothing. And then we explore the right subtree, which is 101. So that's how it will get printed. And in the end, you will print like this. You will say 21, then 10. So let's stop this. The output of this search will be 21, then 10, then 32. Then you will come here, 5. Then you will come here. You will explode this part, nothing. Then you print 11 and 101. That's the in order traversal. And suppose you were asked to code this, same thing. Then how would you do it? Okay, the way you will do it, let's, let's write another routine here. So def in order on any particular node. And once again, the way it's going to be called in your code is basically you're going to say in order of, let's say root. <clears throat> so once again, you will write the base condition first that if node, that is only when the node is not none, we are really going to do anything. Then the first thing is to call the left subtree recursively. All right. So let's call the ref left subtree recursively. And we say in order of node dot left. Once that whole left subtree is processed, then we print the current node. We say print node dot value and end equals to space because I don't want a new line. So print node dot value and then call this in order again on node dot right subtree. And that's that's pretty much it. That's what that's what you're going to do. Let's run this code. And now you have two different traversals. Let me introduce a new line real quick. Hang on. Just give me a second. And that's your result here for the in order traversal. So you can notice some differences here. So from the pre order traversal, now we have 21, then 10, then 32, 5, 11, 101. So 21, 32, 5, 11, 101, the same way that we saw earlier. So that's the in order traversal. But point being, the two important takeaways is that you're learning the traversal, how to traverse. And this is the technology. This is the way it will be done. So let's say you are in an interview setting. Your interviewer will ask you that given the root of the tree, write the in order traversal. Then this is what you will have to write. You'll have to write in order and you will take the root and then you will perform the rest of the operations in here. Any questions before we move forward? Will this be a direct question like uh, right in order or right pre-order? So 99% there will not be a direct question like a pre-order in order. Uh, there will be some question which will indirectly involve a traversal which you will have to do. And right now, the template of that thing will be, so for example, I'm going to cover this later on in the course, but uh, later on in the session, but right now I'm not doing anything. I'm just printing here, right? But you will have to do something here. So you will say, do something on a node, then recursively do that on the left subtree and the right subtree. 
So just they're not just the printing, but so there may be more operations than that. So uh, given the problem statement, uh, do do we have to identify whether we have to do the pre-order or in order based on the question asked or will they? Yes, the answer is, is the answer is uh, there is a good chance that you will have to pick a pick an order, pick some kind of a traversal which suits your need. Yes. Hi, your voice is breaking. Your voice is breaking up a lot. So this uh, DZM that I cannot hear you properly. If, if you want, you can put it on the Discord. I can hear. But yeah, uh, it, I'm not able to hear you properly. Your voice is breaking up a lot. So, all right. Uh, We have talked about trees, right? So now let's look at the use of some of these before we go to the next traversal. One of the very important type of trees in, in a binary tree world is something called a binary search tree. It's a, it's a very popular data structure, BST. Okay. This itself requires some prop, some understanding of how, what, uh, what this data structure is and why it's used. Let me introduce this briefly. Okay. What is a binary search tree? So binary search tree is essentially a binary tree with one condition. And the condition is that for any node, it's any node value will always be greater than the, the left child and will always be smaller than right child. All right, so let's construct a binary search tree based on this condition. So let's take a root. For example, let's say there's a root and that root is assume 100. It has, let's say two children. If this value is 101, then this is not a binary search tree anymore. The left will be smaller than the right. So let's say 50 and let's say this is 150 like that. Then if the tree extends further, then let's say this is 25 and let's say this is 75. Okay. I choose a good, I chose a good example. Basically I can do 25 increments and for 150, I can do this 125 and let's say 175 like that. Right. So there is a pattern in a binary search tree that data is kept in a certain way in this data structure. And the rule for every single node is that the left child will have a smaller value and the right child will have a bigger value than the current node. Right? So suppose that you were to insert data into this. Okay. Suppose you were to insert some kind of a data into this and let's say the value is 200. Then you cannot put 200 here. You cannot put 200 here. Right? You will have to search. You will check whether 200 is bigger than 100 or smaller than 100. Okay, it's bigger than 100. Then let's go here. Is 200 bigger than 150? Yes. Let's go here. Is 175 bigger than 200? No. So let's go here. Oh, there's nothing here. So let's create a 200 and let's link it. Right, so similarly, let's say you're searching. Okay, if let's say the question is, find whether 125 is present in this node. Then I'm going to go to the first node 
and see if 125 is bigger than 100 or smaller than 100. It's bigger than 100. That means I am 100% sure that it cannot be present here. So I go to this node. Right, so I just go to the right subtree here and I check is 125 bigger than 150 or smaller than 150? It's smaller than 150. That means I have to go here. There is no way I can find that here. And this is the value. Suppose this was 126. Then I will ask is 126 bigger than 125 or smaller than 125? It's bigger than. So I'll go here. But that is none. That means we have reached. Sorry, that means we have reached the end of the tree without finding the node. That means the key is not present in the tree in that case. Right. So binary search tree are important because the number of searches we had to do in this case for this size tree. Same to cat. Sorry, was there a question? Yeah. Or a straw. All right, so the number of searches we have to do are pretty small and I'm going to demonstrate this later when we talk about binary search tree in detail. But important thing for one of the traversals here is that if you notice the in order traversal of a binary search tree will be will result in something important. So suppose you're on 100 node. Okay, and you go to well, give me one second. You call in order on 100. That essentially means that the call is on the left subtree first. So on the left subtree, call on 25, on the left subtree first. So first we print 25. Then we print the node 50, 75. Then we come to the root node 100. Then we print 125, 150, 175. That's the traversal result. So anybody notice any specific thing about this? If you notice, this is in sorted order. The values are in sorted order, right? So for a binary search tree, if you do in order traversal, that results in a sort sorted results. That's an important property to keep in mind whenever we are solving a binary search tree problem, right? And the next traversal I'm going to talk about has also also has a special meaning in, in situations. Okay. For when we do expression trees, but that's important, right? So if I change this tree to make a binary tree right now, binary search tree, for example, this one, right? Uh, let's try to make this suppose this is hundred and this is 50. And this is, let's say 150 and then current node. This is, let's say is 25 and this is 75. And this is, let's say 200. So let's run this search and notice now that the in order traversal is essentially returning a sorted result sorted search. All right. So in the final one, I need your help. Okay, the final traversal. Let's draw this. Oh, just we don't need to just erase this real quick. Let's talk about one more traversal. It's, it's similar post order traversal. So pre order was node left, right? So pre order was sorry, uh, the pre order was node left, right? In order was just give me a second. In order was left node and right. So the post order is 
left right node so basically you process the left subtree then you process the right subtree and then you process the node itself so if i was to do post order traversal on this first i will say if i want to call on 100 then first i will have to process the left subtree if i was to call on 50 then i will have to process the left subtree then both of the children are none so first will be 25 then for 50 we go back to 50 then we process this right subtree which is 75 and then the node itself which is 50 similarly for 100 we process the right subtree first before coming to 100 so 100 will be the last value here whatever is the node will be the last value in that case we process the left subtree first then the right subtree and then the tree itself should the smallest 125 yeah just crawl through hey guys just mute yourself please go crawl through let me mute everybody soon quick i'm going to drop i'm going to mute everybody okay 175 then 150 and then finally 100 Right, so that will be the post order traversal. So, given this scheme of thing, can you help me write the code for the post order traversal? All right, let's do this together. If there is a node and I want to write post order traversal, okay, def post order, and we take a node in, and then we write. pass like this and i say post order of root then how would i write the post order traversal here can anybody tell me what should i do you if no yes so first we have to check the base condition that whether if a node is not none then only we are going to proceed forward all right if node then no, i need to if, yeah sorry sorry go ahead um then in order node dot left and then in order node dot right and then print the node then Yes, correct. So post order node dot left first. So you process the left subtree first, and then you process the right subtree, and then you process the node itself. In this case, we are just printing it. We are not doing anything. So I'm just going to node dot value and just a some empty space. So that's the post order traversal. we run this code and notice the root is the last element here in a pre order traversal the root was the first element to be processed right and in this case the root is the last element to be processed and there are differences i mean the these traversal are valuable for different reasons suppose that you were to search something in order would have been good in a binary search tree but suppose there is something called an expression tree okay when you let's say write down when you write code okay suppose the code is 2 plus 3 multiplied by 5 like that then what the compiler is going to do is compiler is going to break this into an expression tree where the value is asterisk first then it will bring 5 here and then it will bring plus here it will bring 2 here and 3 here this is how the expression will be broken down compiler will create a tree then com compiler is essentially going to apply the post order traverse post order to compute this so, com so in order to evaluate the result here of this expression compiler will say evaluate the left first left subtree of this first so you're going to come here then it will say evaluate the left subtree again that's just two okay evaluate the right three subtree three then evaluate this node so it evaluates 2 plus 3 is 5 so this becomes 
five. And your five here. So this is process, this is process, then five into five is 25, something like this. No, sorry, my mistake. I did it, I did it mistake, my mistake, sorry. Damn, that's, I did it wrong, sorry about that. Let's just do plus first, like that. So it will do two first, and then asterisk, then three and five. It will process like that, my mistake. So first it will multiply, and then it will combine. So it will, first of all, you'll have to evaluate this. So then this will tree will get transformed into two and then five into three is 15. Then 15 plus two is 17. And so you process the left whole subtree first, then the right whole subtree first, and then you apply the operator in, in the end. There is a specific problem that used to be asked long back that given this tree, given this expression, Convert it into an expression tree, right? So this is an interesting problem, which we can cover later on as well. But yeah, uh, for now, I think we are good. Just give me one second. Let me stop the recording.